Hi, this is Dr. Richard Maurer with The Blood Code. I am doing a video newsletter today. I hope you enjoy it. And I have a message that I want you to get at the end of this video. And that is, don't lose weight. That's right, don't lose weight. It's not lost on me that I wrote a book, The Blood Code, less than 10 years ago, which was about improving your metabolic health and in large part, losing weight. So why am I saying this? Well, for years I've been watching research come through saying that over the age of 70, weight loss is associated with more dementia onset. We've known that it's uh, people that with cancer who are undergoing treatment, uh, weight loss is a bad sign. Um, uh, why is that? I think as, as people are going through cancer treatment or as people age, weight loss is associated with muscle loss, with strength loss. Um, I have uh, an especial interest myself in this. As many of you know, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease last year. I'm tremor dominant. You'll see this left hand tremor at times. Um, but the research in Parkinson's disease shows that in the one to two years after diagnosis, those people that lose weight have a worse prognosis, um, means their disease tends to progress faster. Um, so here again comes weight loss as a very a uh, bad omen, uh, a, a negative sign towards uh, our health and wellness path. So uh, weight loss, um, uh, we're talking, whenever we say weight loss, I'm always gonna switch it to fat loss. The desirable type of weight loss is fat loss. But if we do that through strength gains and improving our muscle, um, we're actually gonna lose a little less weight than we thought, but we're gonna be healthier. So this came up because within the past week or two, there was another study showing that it wasn't just weight loss associated with dementia onset. It was people's conversion of lean muscle into fattier muscle. So as fat infiltrates started building up in people's muscle tissue, they tended to be more on the path towards dementia onset. So exercise is your way out. What is it about exercise that we know will work? Well, if it's from 25 years ago, everyone was told the same thing for exercise. Everyone was told do 30 minutes of aerobic exercise at 70% of your maximum heart rate, five days a week, adding up to 150 minutes a week. How easy. Everyone's told the same thing. And did it work? It worked a little bit. There was a little drop in blood pressures and there was a little improvement in cardiovascular health compared to sitting on the couch. So, you know, walking and doing uh, aerobic activity is very helpful. But it wasn't as helpful as doing high intensity interval training. So we heard about 10 years ago that as you do HIT, H-I-I-T type training, it moves your heart rate around more. And that is doing a warm up for like, let's say two minutes, and then turning up the resistance and going as hard as you can for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds of hard exercise, I might turn that resistance down and pedal for another minute and a half, minute and 40 seconds, and then I'll turn that resistance up. And I'll do that again and again. I might get three to five of those hard interval activities in during a 15 minute pedaling. High intensity interval training improves the cardiac outcomes. It improves your cardiac variability, what we call HRV, heart rate variability. Um, athletes will refer to that as HRR, heart rate recovery. These are exceptionally good metrics for who has the healthiest cardiovascular system. But neither of those activities improve muscle leanness. So we can end up with a lot of people who do nothing but walking and jogging as sort of what we call the skinny fat, where their muscles are not exceptionally lean, but they don't weigh much. So here again, how do we way more, but with that metabolically lean muscle. You guessed it, it's some sort of weightlifting. It's a resistance exercise. When I put a resistance workout together, it looks like a lot of those exercises you, you get from any sort of boot camp or a, um, a workout you have online with your favorite website or um, uh, like something we put together with uh, Jeff Eckhaus uh, from The Blood Code uh, a while back. We, um, put our heads together and found the sort of metabolic workout. And it was something four to five exercises that are looped through two to three times. Um, 
a workout should be very simply something that you push. You know, if I'm pushing, it may be as simple as a push up. I might make that harder by lifting one of my legs out, but maintaining that nice core plank position. And I might do 10 of those, switch legs, do 10 on the other side. And then I need another exercise. Maybe I do legs after that. And it's a squat, but that squat has a heavier weight up high on my body. We call this a goblet squat. Um, I might hold that like this and just bring myself into a squat. I might do 10 of those. Now I've done a push, I've done a squat. My next ex exercise should be a pull. I could use a band, I could use a cable, I could use a dumbbell and go into a lunge, set that lunge downward and get a little pull and rotation. The whole idea is I'm trying to make four exercises that hit my entire body. I might need a little more core after that. So sit down, grab some sort of weight or a heavy ball and just touch each side. I might toss it to myself to make it a little more challenging. Once I'm done with that core exercise, you got it. I'm gonna get a drink of water and then go back to the push. Do that exercise, hit each exercise three times. That whole workout doesn't take more than 25 minutes. 25 minutes, three times a week, that's only an hour and a half. That's less than the 150 minutes that was recommended years ago. And it works vastly better to improve lean muscle mass and thereby decreasing your risk of dementia, worse Parkinson's progress, um, and improving your cardiovascular health to boot. I hope this is helpful. I'm gonna put a bunch of the research that I've been reading in my notes below this video. I hope you enjoy it and I hope it inspires you to find your healthiest metabolic lifestyle. Be well, this is Dr. Richard Maurer.